that's it. We just want to win for our team. My goodness! as good as men or better it's a huge point for the bay area good chance that's the number one highlight of the week baby welcome back to session number two in weekend number 13 this is day number two of mltt right here coming to you live from wichita kansas i'm adam bobro and i am thrilled but it's not about me it's about you are you guys ready for the action all right then without any further ado let's call in our officials Yovana knezhevich and Jorge Vanegas. And now, coming in with 199 points, they're the third place team, and they've got some big horns to fill. A big warm welcome for Texas Smash. Led by digital coach Jorg Bitsi Gayo, Hiromitsu Kasahara, Nanda Naresh, Dave McBeth, Nishant Labaka, Amy Wong, and on the end, Daryl Tao. Their opponents now, the fourth place team, fighting to claw their way back in. They've got a whole lot of rotation because they are Seattle Spinners! Led by coach Luba Sadovska, Nikhil Kumar, Olajide Omotayo, Johan Hogberg, Andrew Tao, Fabiola Diaz, and Paul Chi. Now that all the Warriors have entered the arena, let's shake some hands and slap some skins and let the games begin. Well, our weekend in Wichita continues and the action only intensifies. We just watched the Bay Area Blasters clinch their playoff spot. And tonight, the Texas Smash could take a huge step towards the number two spot or perhaps even trying to catch Bay Area. But the Seattle Spinners are going to have something to say about it as well. The Spinners are have their backs against the wall. Seattle needs at least 13 points out of the 21 available tonight to avoid elimination with just one more day in the regular season after this evening's competition. The Blasters atop the pack. Portland hoping Seattle can prevent Texas from creating too big of a lead for second place. We'll see how the cookie crumbles over the rest of the evening as we welcome you back to our broadcast perch. Evan Leppler with the Hall of Famer Sean O'Neill. It's interesting because Texas has to like the position that they're in. They won 16 to five yesterday. They have a Seattle team that has had its ups and downs through the second half of the season. But you have a hunch that the spinners are, are aligned right tonight, why? No, I just looked at the lineups and I just see that there's a chance for a number of sweeps and they're not giving up. They're fighting the entire weekend because what are their other options? They can't give up, they have a slim chance. So you gotta put everything on the table. This will be the sixth match of the season between Seattle and Texas. The Smash have had Seattle's number lately. The last two matches in January and February, you see the scores were all Texas in a 65 to 40 point total through the previous five matches. So Texas has the tiebreaker over Seattle in terms of the total points, even with 21 points still available tonight, but the 21 points well, loom large in the division standing. Let's take you back to September. At the home of the Santa Cruz Warriors, Dave McBeth was all smiles, and the smash were victorious. But a month later in Texas, Fabi Diaz helped to finish off Texas in a 12-9 win. And then Fabi Diaz again closed out the Golden Game as Seattle escaped. The new year, though, has belonged to Texas in this rivalry, Sean. Kasahara put the finishing touches on the 17-4 win. 
in February up in Everett, Washington. So that sets the stage for the lineup today. And well, for Texas, they've got Kasahara in the leadoff spot against Olajide Omatayo, who you know is eager to get back on the table after what happened yesterday. You know, I definitely think that that's a pick em match. Both players, a lot of power, a lot of precision. And then we go down to singles two. And one of my favorite players, Johan Hagberg, a lot of power as a lefty, but he's playing against David Macbeth. So I think that would favor Texas. Doubles yesterday, Seattle was awesome. They played so strong against the Blasters. And then singles three and singles four, I've got to give the advantage to Seattle there, just based on ranking. So I think anything could happen in this match. And this first match with these two powerful players really set the tone to see if Seattle can win big or if Texas can put some more pressure on Portland, who only took three points in their last match with Bay Area. This will be the third meeting of the season between Omatayo and Kasahara. The Japanese player for the Smash won two out of three games in November over Omatayo and then also won two out of three games in February. But uh, Omatayo has, uh, has really hit some beautiful shots this weekend. He's had some tough luck as well. But uh, it, it, this has the making stylistically of a really intriguing battle of the top players for each of their respective teams. And I would not be surprised if we see at least one golden game between these two players. Both are excellent at making adjustments. You mean golden point? Golden point, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're going to be in the golden game as well, right? So at least one. Omatayo will serve to get the evening underway. Zero, one. Look wow. at that serve. One, one. <laughs> Kazahara. <laughs> Looked around like, how did that happen? Second. Two straight for Olajide, the Nigerian from Lagos, now resides in France. And we're even two points apiece. Two, two. What's the key for Olajide Three, in two. this match, Sean? How does he get the better of Hiromitsu? I think it's really moving around his opening attack. He just keeps it to one location, as we saw Kazahara play against Kole yesterday. Oh! So much power due to his racket speed. Two, four. But if he has to be thinking and moving, it's just not as effective. That time, Omataya did a great job of move, moving the ball out to the forehand side. Kazahara so lethal from the backhand corner, with both his forehand and backhand. Three, four. That was a nice deep opening loop. Kazahara. Five, three. Motioning that the ball jumped right at the end. Oh, look at that loop down the line. Oh, this a loop. Six, three. Ball never bounced above three or four inches after it cleared the six inch net. Yeah. Strong response from when, Hero. When Omatayo four, played Najin Bao yesterday, he reminded himself of not wanting to leave the forehand open or playing out to his opponent's forehand because he leaves his own vulnerable to any type of forehand attack. So the players were Five, six. looking around after some of the errant shots. Oh, that nice. was a quality forehand loop. 
certainly didn't let the previous Seven, five. impact his aggressiveness on the next swing. He really timed it well. Just now with the serve and the two-point mini break. Several members of the Portland Paddlers, including the coach, sitting near the Seattle bench cheering on the spinners. Portland needs Seven, six. Seattle to have a big night to have their well, best chance of making the playoffs. Well, Portland better be careful because if Seattle does win big, the next target is going to be on Portland for them to try to. It's true. But uh, if they were to right do now, first six, things first, eight. I got to worry about Texas, who's only three points behind compared to Seattle, who they're 28 points clear of in the standings. So even if Seattle, if Seattle won 21 nothing. That's probably the best case scenario for Portland. Because then they'd have a three point lead over Texas and a seven point lead over the spinners. Rather than then they would control their own destiny going right. into tomorrow. Yeah. Portland plays after Texas tomorrow. And Texas eight, has to eight. deal with the first place blasters at 11 a.m. Huge advantage for Portland playing the second match. Yes, uh, unless they're eliminated before the match begins. Which could happen if, if Texas, Texas has a good night tonight and then blows out or wins. Hey! And if Texas puts up 14 points tonight, they Nine, up 11. Eight. If they got 12 points tomorrow, that would create an insurmountable lead. 9-8, Omatayo. Game point Eight, for Olaji Day. <laughs> Haven't met too many people in my life that have the initials O O. I like it. Olaji Day Omakayo gets it done in game one <laughs> against Hiramitsu Kasahara. Kasahara won two out of three games each of the two previous times that they played. But game one tonight goes to the Nigerian. So the plot thickens. Seattle on the board first to serve. on a Saturday night zero, here in zero. Wichita. Kasahara will serve to start game two. Again, very smart move by Omotayo. Just get the first spin in. Nothing crazy. Move it around. You can see in the forehand to forehand battle, Kazahara's slight advantage in more spin. Footwork probably about the same. Omatayo plays a longer stroke. And there's the short backhand over the table by Kazahara. One, two. Good stuff from Kasahara there, going on the attack quickly. Three, one. Oh, what a backhand punch <laughs> by Omotayo. Three, two. Took that soft opening loop and just punched stop. it to the corner. Three, two. 
Jorge Venegas reminding Kasahara about the palm on the serve. Keeps his focus, smashes a winner. Two, four. Sean, we, we've Go! talked so much throughout the weekend and the season five. about the American Olympic team that will be competing in Paris this summer. What non-American MLTT players do you expect to also see in five, the Olympics this three. summer? For sure, Jim, Jeremy Hazim, because he just qualified last weekend for Canada. Um, I'm trying to think of... Most of the Six, three. Olympic regional qualifiers have taken place in Europe, Asia, South America, and North America has an event coming up in Lima, Peru, mm -hmm. in which Nikhil Kumar earned the right Four, six. last weekend to be one of two Americans along with Knuck Ja, who will be fighting for four slots that are available for the Americas region. And Nikhil will also go with Amy Wong to check. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Matayo lost his balance, tried not to fall on the table. And Four, seven. Somehow he stayed in the point long enough for Kasahara to send it into oblivion. Yeah, rip a winner. So in check, um, Amy Wong of the Smash and Nikhil Kumar of the Spinners will pair up in the mixed doubles to try to make one of four nice. slots available for the mixed doubles competition in Seven, Paris. Five. Only 16 teams compete. The U.S. women will be competing as a team there. The men will only be playing singles if they qualify. And I would, I would say that both Nikhil and Canuck Ja have an excellent opportunity of coming out of the Eight, America's Olympic Challenge. And right now, Eight, five. Kazahara is mixing up the spin serving very effectively. We've seen some fantastic serves in this match. I mean, just the speed at Kazahara's forehand. Five, nine. Just unleashing a ton of power. Five, ten. Game points for Hero to even up this match at one game apiece. Ten, six. Lost his balance at the very end. Some heavy hitting from both one players. But Hiro Mitsu Kasahara takes game two. 11 to six. We got a rubber game coming up in the opening singles match of the night here in Wichita. So the up to the right, minute Texas standings, Hiramitsu Kasahara just earned Texas' 200th 
point Seattle's of the season. Anyone over here? One game to one. Christian uh, Lily Rose and the Portland Paddlers de Zero. delegation Zero. that's looking on near the Seattle oh. bench. Momentayo will serve to start game three. An important early edge up for grabs here. One zero. Zero two. Stop. This ball in zero, the backcourt. Ball boy takes care of it. Nice job being patient on the serve Zero, return by Mateo. Yeah, he's really waiting to see if that ball is going to double bounce or just call it half long, just come off the end. Sometimes that slower Three, ball can one. create a lot of difficulties for the server going for that third ball attack when it's not coming over quickly off the bounce. Again, you just see a nice controlled opening for Mataya. Not going for a winner, but more of a placement opening backhand attack to a good location. Went big and a little too strong two, that time four. from Mataya. So it's a 4 2 game as they go to the towels here in game three. John talking about the Olympics. When does your preparation begin for broadcasting with NBC once again? We'll start out of Stanford, Connecticut. Five, we'll be doing two, it stateside. Two, five. And July 24th is when they have most of the domestic commentators come in. And then we'll go through August 13th, 14th. A lot of table tennis. So it'll be so exciting to see Team USA with Lily, Rachel, Amy, and then hopefully Nikhil and Canuck John. Six, As two. well as Jeremy. This will be your third Olympics as a broadcaster, your fourth? I'm gonna say sixth or seventh. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm much Show older fire. than I was. Seven, two. Well, you competed in two Olympics as a player. First two years at table tennis was in the Olympics in 88 and 92. This will be the seventh. I remember some of the first conversations Three, we seven. had where you telling me stories about your uh, mingling with members of the Dream Team in Barcelona in 92. Definitely a highlight. They, they, all those guys just, from what I understand, wouldn't stop bothering you. Like yeah, they Barkley and Malone and Stockton Ford, and oh, Jordan and Jordan in particular Leitner. all wanted to hang out with you. Right. Well, it's they were playing ping pong, so they all wanted the tips. <laughs> Excellent rally. Just so much patience. Seven, by five. Hard to just stay with a controlled attack. He yeah, outlasts Elijah Day on that point. Do you remember what advice you gave to Michael Jordan to help his ping pong? No, game? it was the, the one person I spoke to. I okay, spoke to two. Patrick Ewing. Okay. He wasn't interested. And then Charles Barkley. I asked him how he was doing with Leitner and Jordan. And he said he sucked. And I asked if he wanted some tips. And he said it wouldn't make a difference. And then I asked <laughs> if it was like his golf game. He didn't find that that funny. <laughs> Seven seat, time out. Time all. out taken here with Omatayo in front, 7-6. All right, time out called here, Elijah. Time, time out called by Texas, and, Bill Jones and obviously the smash. You're, you're playing just back and back and running. Yeah, in you have to go sooner. That's what he wants. Uh, Bill, yeah. Local. You were putting it more on his body, but it was still returning, and you have to go deeper. And sooner. You need to find a way to use your you forehand. It doesn't matter if you use where you put it for him. Are you okay yeah. if I share? Yeah. Maybe you can right. put this for some sure. Okay, okay. Bill's back. 83. Maybe short the forehand. Change yeah, the other place. Like every time the same, he's controlling everything. He got into the game when he was 70. Control with spin, okay? 
You put and more you speed on it and the ball just flies. Sure when you want you to go over you the table, the, the, the ball man is going to stop a little bit. Yeah. Right? So if you want yeah. to go, right. you have to go so over. His dad, and my dad, and you attack, it's shorter on the table, not too deep. It's shorter on the table, put more into the table, right? And again, this serve works on him. Just put a little bit more and maybe on his elbow or something. Hello, daughter. What's your name? Time, time. I can't even Time. Time. Bill Gore. Nice to eavesdrop on the Seattle Huddle with, with Coach Luba Sadowska right. and also Nikhil we'll Kamar giving advice. Texas coach Simmons. Sikigayo. Represented by that cell phone Sahara. hanging up. Or uh, being held up by that uh, cell phone stand over there. Still charging. Jorg following from afar in Germany. And that serve worked. Six. Eight. 9-6 lead now for Olaji Day. And that's exactly what you want to have happen Six, come out of the timeout. Six, nine. Take two points directly on your serve. Nine, seven. Big point there for Omatayo. Ten, seven. Gives him a bunch of chances to close this thing out. A little risky with the serve that goes off the end of the table, but he countered attack so efficiently with his forehand. Beautifully done. 11, Two seven, out of three for one. Olajide Omatayo. Nice response after he lost three straight to Jin Bao Ma last night. So Seattle off to the 2-1 lead. And we'll chat with Olajide here in Wichita in just a moment. Day. Well done. Thanks for joining us. Uh, obviously, Heroes had your number the last two times you played them, but you get two out of three today. What in your mind was the difference? Actually, uh, the last time that I played against him, I, I noticed that it was stepping around too early. And today, and also I noticed that his service are very of quality, but always coming out half long. So today I just tried to play a little bit slow and a little bit fast. I was just mixing it up. So, no, the mixing up was amazing. The question I have is when you played doubles yesterday. I've never seen two shots hit so hard in my life that you delivered. What is your secret to generating so much power? I think right now I have so much anger in me, so I'm just trying to do, like show it on the table. <laughs> Where does this anger come from, Olajide? Okay, my team is fourth on the, in the group and I think that we, we are better and we need to show that, yes, we have what it takes to go to the playoffs. Well, you're not out of it yet. Uh, what will be the key in your doubles match today? You'll face Hero again along with Amy Wong. We will, we will go on the, onto the table being positive, do what we know how to do best. We did some practice today, and hopefully everything will work out. All right, appreciate your time and insight. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Bye. Well, Hogberg and Macbeth are coming up next. Before we dive in here, I want to ask Sean about something Elijah Day just said in terms of how productive is it to channel that anger if you can do it the right way? It really is. You have to figure out where the motivation is going to come from. And not being out of contention, but being in fourth when you'd really love to be top two, hopefully he's able to keep the energy going even if he falls behind in the game and not just overplay. That's really the biggest threat. What I'm liking right now is we have a different color hair color with Johan Hagberg 
Smile to drop the, the uh, Zero. blonde Zero. highlights. I'm guessing this is the more traditional Swedish look that he parlays on the table. European matchup here. One, two. From Great Britain. Dave, a new dad, his daughter Freya born in late March. And Hagberg's challenge is going to be, two. he's going to counterattack, and he's going to go for winners on the counterattack. Can he deal with the heavy topspin that Macbeth will Zero, deliver on three. his first attack? This is the first time these two have met in a singles match in Major League Table Tennis. Hagler gets his first point as three, one. sends the return long. Three, two. Macbeth just has so much more size, so much longer reach here. I mean, how, how does he want to use that to his advantage? And Whoa, whoa. check out that deep serve. Two, four. Special. An ace cross court. That does not happen often. That was, ball jumped at the last moment. That's what I was trying to do to you earlier today without exactly. nearly as much success. With Macbeth, because of his height, his short game is going to be Three, four. generally very strong. But it's the leverage he gets on those first top spins. Beautiful technique. And you can see his backhand go over the table. Hagberg loves four, to four. take almost 360 spinning counterattacks that will send him to the ground. So very different. And look at the power there by Macbeth. He didn't go around Five, the net there. Four. He was pretty close to the net post. Just over the top of the logo on the net. And there you can just see. Macbeth, when he makes that first topspin, he's not just six. driving the ball, but he's adding as much topspin as possible to make it almost impossible for Hagberg to make a counterattack. Well, David hadn't played high-level table Four, tennis seven. in a little bit because he missed the event at the end of February with his wife just a few weeks away from the due date. And then obviously he's been taking Seven, care of the five. newborn in recent weeks more than he's been training. Which is and, understandable. And I think we, we saw that rust in his first game first yesterday game. against Isak Bila, and then he turned it around and took games two and three against the Dominican from for the Paddlers. Eight, five. And a very similar match between Vila and Six, Hewitt Hagberg eight. where Macbeth is primarily just controlling the serve and serve return, getting the first attack on, and allowing the opponent to take Six, nine. riskier shots. And you just see it's so tough for Hagberg to get his footing. Ten, six. So we can get a clean shot on any of these counter attacks. Beth with game point. 10, Back 7. Able to fight off one. But not two. 11, 7. Beth, one game to 11, zero. 7 win. Workman like in game number one. Solid stuff from the big grit. And we are even 2 2 on the team tally. That point brings the smash within one of the Portland Paddlers for second place. And a lot more action in this team match. Zero games to one, spinners to serve, zero, zero.
Hagberg will have the ball in his palm to start game two. The lefty from Sweden gets us Net. going with a left. Zero, zero. Jay Hagberg says his origin is a mixture of Lao, Vietnamese, and Swedish. Lives in Stockholm. He'll turn 30 this summer in July. I think he's been playing out of Los Angeles. One of the clubs there. Giving the U.S. a, Two, one. a nice try coaching some on the side, but also as imagine playing as many tournaments Sean what what American city two, have we two. not gone to on our MLTT journey this year that you would most like to go to next season couple Boston two three Good table tennis there Los Angeles getting ready for the games after Paris they've already started thinking about it got a great Three, High school, middle three. school, table tennis league. They're run by LA Ping Pong. Possibly DC, my former hometown. Three good spots. Four, three. Yeah. I hope we could do Boston in like September. Four, or four. April or March as opposed to you know, November, December, yeah. January, February. L.A., that time of year would be lovely. Yep. Four, five. Certainly when we go back to Chicago Six, in three weeks, four. it'll be different than when we were there in November. Which you were there with Matt. That's right. Possibly also Minneapolis would be a fun city to Six, five. bring MLTT to. A lot of options. Twin Cities, great place. Oh, look five. at Macbeth, just so strong from the backhand five, side of the seven. table. Just a two-winged attack. See Hagberg setting up for the forehand. Macbeth seeing that. Redirecting the ball to the weaker side. Look at that backhand. Fearless Five, stuff eight. from Dave Macbeth. So effortless. And then a quality block. Hagberg made a good forehand topspin open Nine, shot. Five. You can see frustration building a little bit for Johan. He's throwing everything he's got at Dave, but his reach, his strength. And the, the good luck that he's had as well on a couple of those Ten, four two five. of his bounces have Macbeth a point away from the teams to none lead. <laughs> and there's a little <laughs> turnabout fair play. Six, ten. Ball goes over to net and comes back into it. But a service error 11, will six. finish up that game and guarantee that Dave Macbeth will win the match. There's still an important point to be had. Let's see if Hagberg can regroup after this tough miss. High ball toss. But it did not work out. On the phone, the former 
our USATT National Coach of the Year a couple times last decade. Zero, one. York Bitsy Gallo guiding his team from afar. Two, zero. How much coaching do you want to do when your player's up two games to none? You still can give them advice, even if it's just reassuring them of what they're Three, doing is correct. Three, zero. But they're always looking at the opponent and seeing what they're attempting to do and predicting what type of adjustments they might make so that your player doesn't get caught flat-footed and zero, four. win a game easy than lose a game easy. a good solid edge for Macbeth, but Hagberg starting out very strong One, here four. in game three. Five, one. one of these examples, Evan, it was just not really close to 11-6 in the last game. And right now Hagberg turns the corner at five with the four-point lead. Serving now from his forehand side, trying to mix it up, and it works. Now 6-1. Six, six, one. One. After really being outplayed in game two. Oh, <laughs> Dave McBeth has had enough. That looked like one of your shots two, today. Six. Except mine went either into the net or off the table No, no, long. you had a couple that were yeah. outstanding. Oh, Some like that one, though. From his knees. <laughs> I never got that low. Three, six. Uh, I appreciate your, your patient tutelage. Clearly, you are a fountain of knowledge. And, uh, uh, Seven, I have three. Some racket instincts. I well, play a good amount of tennis. Yeah, I was going to say your tennis really helped out a lot so we could figure out what style of play. But there was, there was a moment today Seven, when I was you know, all the way to the forehand side. And like I was in a tennis match, I'm like, okay, I got to get back. And I try to get to the middle of the table, and you just pounded me back to the forehand side with a winner. And you, you made the point. You don't have time to Five, get back. Like seven. in tennis, you have a lot more time before the ball is coming back. Got to watch the opponent's racket a little bit more. Tennis, you've got time. Table tennis, you have to judge where they're going during their backswing. And now Macbeth. Oh, that's a big error there. And Hagberg. Five, eight. Big point here for Hagberg to keep the four point lead and the serve. He's going to take this third game. Looks like he tried to serve the Eight, serve back six. with that little forehand slice. They've still got the serve and a two point lead. And now a three point lead as Macbeth returns it long. Nine, six. Nicely done by Jay Hagberg to create Six, a slew of game ten. points, trying to salvage a game from Dave Macbeth. Well placed serve by Macbeth. Seven, ten. Oh, what a return Seven, from Hagberg. Seven. Handling the power to, to take game three, 11 to seven. Hogberg, Johan Hogberg takes game number three, 11 to seven to tie it up. So Seattle Spinners. Big point right for the Spinners. In this he loses the match, but he can still be proud. He even things up three apiece. Omatayo and Diaz. The doubles team that won yesterday for Seattle getting ready to face Kasahara and Wong, the doubles team that won yesterday for Texas. And we say good evening once again to Dave McBeth, two out of three from Jay Hagberg. What, what, what is your mentality after game two in a match like not this? To, not to start like that. Yeah. What, what happened? Just a couple of cheap errors. I'd been playing the ball that is received that he'd been playing to me. I've been spinning that quite well. First two sets, obviously I missed two of those. Had an easy backhand as well, I think. One three or love three. 
I mean, Dave, and it's hard, yeah, hard to get back after that. You have more size and reach than a lot of guys that you play against, Hagberg among them. Yeah. How do you try to use that to your advantage? Well, normally if I can open open the table up, and if, for example, if I can spin and get them to give me an easier ball, obviously that allows me to get a bit more room to use the power that I've got. But obviously if they try to counteract that. So, yeah, but normally if I've got time to play, I can then use some of my power. So one of the questions I haven't had a chance to ask you this year so far is, how has it been different at the 10-10 versus the traditional deuce game win by two? What has been your mindset in those situations? Yeah, I think it's definitely a change. I felt it the first weekend, but it's more, obviously it depends who's serving. I mean, I, I prefer just to try and focus on what's been working up to that point. Obviously some people like to go for a surprise, but it definitely adds a new dynamic. It also helps if you're if you've been leading and they come back, suddenly you, you've still got that, technically another game point, so that makes it fun. Good stuff, fun yeah. watching you play. We'll yeah. let you go, get Thank ready you. for the Golden Cheers. Game. Thanks, Dave. So we shift toward the doubles, and both these doubles teams won two out of three games last night. Omatara, Omatayo, and Diaz for Seattle, taking on Kasahara and Wong. Omatayo and Diaz have had some pretty good success against uh, Kasahara and Wong, including, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Kasahara and Wong have had the success against Omatayo and Diaz uh, the last uh, couple months. This has been the doubles matchup, and a Texas team has won five out of six games. The nice thing about Seattle with Omataya and Diaz is their games are so different. Omataya loves the powerful forehands. Diaz loves to mix it up with her backhand. She plays with pimpled out rubber on the backhand side. She likes to take pace off the ball. So Seattle constantly is mixing it up with a lot of power and then a lot of control. Texas, heck of a winner there from Wong to get things started. Texas, great Zero. racket speed. One. They are so quick and they love to stay close to the table. Oh. Big swing, they <laughs> just raise the ball. Two, Zero. Texas wins both points on Seattle's serve. And then another error on the return from Omatayo makes it 3, three nothing. Zero. I have a feeling these games are going to go quickly. Not a lot of long Hits. rallies. Three, zero. Just as I say that, a 15 shot rally. <laughs> Wasn't quite 15 zero, shots, four. but that might be the longest <laughs> rally of the match, to your point. Both, both teams just taking their time. We saw Omatayo when he played against Kazahara, playing a lot of slower openings, just getting the ball into play. And that's what I expect from Amy Wong. Any balls that sit up Zero, just a tad, she will swat away. She did not miss. First point for Seattle. Mentioned it off the top, five. Sean. Seattle. Needs to win at least 13 points in this match to avoid elimination from playoff consideration. Which means they need at least seven going into the Golden Game. Amy Wong is locked in tonight. <laughs> a couple balls that have popped up and she has Done the job finishing the point, leaving no doubt. How about that, sir? Three, six. And that's very tough for Fabi to be running all Seven, over the table, three. especially when the Tempo gets that fast to try to get her backhand in. She loves to take pace off the ball. Eight, 
three. Once again, Amy Wong's backhand over Four, the table. Nine. Just snapping it in. And with Haya with the deep serve. Nine, five. Point for Seattle if they're going to make a move here. If they could win this one on Kasahara serve, they would get the next two serves with a chance to tie. Oh, just off the edge. Six, ten. And now a slew of game points for the smash. Looking to seize game one and retake the lead on the team count. Power from Fabi Diaz when the opportunity arose. Seven, Great technique on the back and just really straight through the ball. Sim similarly, what we've seen Amy do on the high ball. And you can hear Omitayo wanting to get back into this game. Ten, eight. Two serves for Wong. Obviously, still game point for Texas. That caught the edge. Omatayo has missed a few of those, but it has not deterred his aggressiveness. And he is <laughs> chanting LA. Kasahara <laughs> stared at that corner of the table for a while as if to say, did that corner move? What an effort by Omatayo! Incredible! To create a golden point. Completely oh, airborne. Boy. You know what it is. Great you forehand. Win. Jump golden shot. Points. And now one point to take the first game. Back on G Day's serve. Oh, incredible Under stuff. 10, Texas somehow two. escapes. Olajide can't help but smile. Exciting doubles rally on Golden Point. Even Omatayo clapped after that point was over. Great teamwork on both sides of the net. Texas with the initial game win in doubles. Yes, Sean, I understand Texas won that game and that gives them the lead for the final playoff spot in the division heading into the final day of the regular season tomorrow. And we have plenty of time to talk about that. But look, the comeback from Seattle in that game from 10-6 down to get it to 10-all, and particularly that leaping forehand from Omataya. We've seen diving oh, shots this year. We have seen no Ryan look Zittle. shots. We've seen behind the back. We have not seen too many shots leaping forehands like we just witnessed from Omataya all season. And he brings such excitement to the game. Zittle. As he said Zittle. during the last interview, he's trying to channel that anger to 
get back onto the top rung, possibly help his team, but such an uphill battle now. Zero, three. With the Blasters, Texas and Portland in the driver's seat. Oh, look at Amy Wong's backhand. Just like the start of last game. Four, zero. Both in terms of the score and Amy Wong's sizzling skill. Four, one. Beautiful shot by Fabi Diaz. Two, four. Nice clean forehand smash. Tricky side spin return. Five, three. What's the key to being a good serve caller in doubles? You want to serve so that your partner gets the ball they want. You don't want to just guess and hope the opponent misses, but you often will let your partner Six, give three. the signal. So here, Kazuhara is giving the signal to Amy, saying what type of ball would he like? Oh, look at the back hit by Omatayo. Both these teams have such power. Six. But communications is the other element of doubles. Got to let your partner know what you're looking for and to be as encouraging as possible. No one likes to play doubles with a person who is looking and getting on their case every time you make a mistake. <laughs> Homataya fought to make that forehand and Amy just took it off Seven, the bounce five. for a winner. Again, going for that side spin push. Seven, six. Goes long. And Seattle right back in this game. Eight, seven, Very six. similar trajectories for each of these first two games. See if Seattle can switch up the seven, result. Six. That was great teamwork by Seattle. Deep push by Omatayo to Diaz quickly playing the first offensive shot. Nice one two punch. Right idea. This Fabi needs to move a little bit more to get better position for that high backhand. Not the first time this Nine, weekend we've seven. seen that happen. That's a tough error at seven serving eight. <laughs> well, which part of the table did that hit? It caught the side, did not catch the edge. It's Texas's point. Heck of an effort from Omatayo, who almost ended up in the Seattle bench. ball would have needed to go more over the table surface. Wong missed it, so Seattle's still alive. Omatayo continues to bring Eight, back ten. some real missiles from Texas. Wow. 11, what a 
hockey Lift point that on. was. Smash. Somehow it goes Texas's way in the smash. Win another tight game. Around the net post short. But it forced Diaz to just kind of snake it back over and it caught the tape. 5-3 to the smash. That was a promising start to the night for Seattle with Omatayo getting a couple points in singles, but after he took two out of three versus Kasahara, four of the last five points have gone Texas's way, so the smash now two points clear of Portland. Seattle still 25 behind the paddlers in the cellar of the West. 27 points out of a playoff spot, and it's really go time right now for Seattle. One. There are 13 points that are still available tonight. To keep their season alive, one. the spinners one. need at least 10 of them. Of course, they'll play tomorrow regardless, but to keep their championship weekend hopes alive. Two, one. One, three. Meanwhile, this is yet another weekend, Sean, where we're seeing the teams with the lead going into the Golden Game taking care of business. That has been really the story of the entire winter, spring season since we hit One, January. Four. 33 Golden Games in 2024. Only three of them have been won. I think the players are Five, feeling one. by the a team lot trailing, excuse me, a lot more confident in these four points. Where at the beginning, players weren't really sure, do you go all offensive, do you try something different? Of course, there's always the chance for the A, B, or the top two players to play a 3-4, because the coaches dictate the Five, order. Two. So smooth. Here's Two, the thing that surprised six. me from a Golden Game standpoint. You would think at least once in 85 Golden Games that a team would win a Golden Game but lose the match, which is to say you know, they'd be down, but they'd still find a way to salvage the Golden Game as Amatayo takes out yet another barrier. Three, six. He's gotten barriers on both sides of the table over the course of his weekend. Okay. And, and the reason I bring that up is because at six, championship four. weekend, the golden game is going to change ever so slightly in that it's no longer worth six points. The winner of the Golden Game six, wins the match, five. even six, if five, out. a team won no points going into it. We got a Texas timeout. Texas smash calls the timeout. Try to eavesdrop on the conversation. It's okay. No big problem. Just. When you feel that you can change the outcome of the match, sometimes it's tactical. Now you might wonder, who's the coach? Where's the coach for Texas Smash? I don't want to make things too awkward. See this tripod right here? 
Right behind yeah, Nathan yeah, Arash. Yeah, 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 that tripod holds the coach, your Vinci guy. He's coaching from Germany. He would be here. But there was a little mix up with visas and passports. So he's been coaching digitally. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. Normally he's a quiet shy guy. Kasahara and Wong back to the table with a one point lead. For here and now. Just back to the Golden Game point for just a second. Six, five. The fact that it's no longer worth points at Championship Weekend is a change. The other change is a team could have larger than a 5-0 lead going into the Golden Game. If the team is up 11-4, they'll start up 7-0. They could start as, as much as 15-0 up. But even if a team wins every single game through the first 15 games, they're still technically sort of faint hope. 15-0. In, in, <laughs> yeah. It would be stunning, but Six, seven. you never know. I don't think we're going to have a team go up 15-0 at championship weekend, but again, you never know. Eight, seven. Some point tomorrow, I'm going to ask you for your championship weekend prediction as we sit here three weeks away. Okay. So I'll give you the night to, to sleep on it. In Seattle, eight, eight. we'd love to bring this to a 5-4 game tally if possible. Big stuff from Olajide Omatayo. Deep serve from Diaz. Then Omatayo nine, with a eight. bigger forehand. That running forehand. To his right has been there for him throughout the day and really all season long. An aggressive doubles play here directly off the serve. Oh! And that's a oh! jump nine, nine. off of Fabi's paddle. She didn't want it to go that high. But it was deep. Tough miss. No! And now a game Ten, point to nine. complete the sweep. Kasahara serving. Oh. Ten all. And Kasahara <laughs> Omatayo gets away with a very oh. deep Ten. push. You know For the second time in the three games. Me. We are at 10 all. Boys. Golden point. What a match. Tough luck for Seattle as Kasahara and Wong win their second golden point in just absolutely riveting fashion. It's a 3-0 sweep for the Texas doubles duo. And it gives the smash a 6-3 lead. Kasahara and Wong somehow, some way, get to the finish line. 3-0. Just crazy. If you want to catch these highlights, check out all of MLTT's social media. I follow on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. And on their YouTube channel, they've got a top 10 for every weekend. If that point's not in it, and we're joined now by Amy Wong of the Texas Smash. Amy, congratulations. 3-0 uh, looks dominant, but obviously it was super tight and easily could have gone the other way. What, what, in your opinion, was ultimately the difference on those big points for you and Hero today? Um, I think for me it's mainly control because I know the Hero can power through. So my goal for this match was just get the ball on the table and not overpower. 
but it did seem like, at least in the first game, any ball that popped up, you had no difficulty smashing. So how do you balance when to go for the big shot? Is it just based on the height of the ball that you decide to go for? It? Because the very last point was amazing as well. Uh, yeah, it depends on the height of the ball. I think if it's above head level, I would smash it. But if it's under that, I try to control it, spin it more. That was really a, an exceptional last point, and the, the golden point in the first game, too, is really exciting doubles table tennis. But wh what's it like competing against Olaju Day and Fabi out there? Uh, they're, real, they're a really strong pair, and I think going into the match, we, were, um, we had good pre preparation, and yeah, I think me and Hero worked well together. All right, Amy, uh, obviously the Smasher now three points clear of the paddlers in the standings. Is it just as simple as trying to compile as many points as you can over the next couple days? Yeah, definitely, because this is really important this week. I'm going to the championships, so I think we'll try to acquire as many points as possible. Good stuff. Well done. We'll see you in the Golden Game. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Kasahara and Wong deliver but he's got a three points for, for the smash. smash. Up to the minute standings. Other thing to keep in mind is you know, Texas, it's going to be tough for them to catch the Bay Area Blasters, so right but to now, have any chance of doing grabs. so, they need Again, to be within 21 points the screen, of the Blasters heading into their match the against the Bay Area tomorrow. Right and they're currently and the way, 26 back with line, 12 more points up for grabs this evening. So they Sean could get as close giving you the play as by play details, stats, and heading into you tomorrow, to which so would require them to win 18 to 3 to get the number one seed. Could they be happy to clinch a playoff? Yeah, well, I was going to say the top two finish is what everyone on the East Coast was fighting for. Right. All right, here we go. First appearance of the weekend for the youngster from New Jersey, Nishant Labaka, against Andrew Sal, who was pretty sharp in his match yesterday Run, against seal. Alexi Duan. Sal has been a very steady CD contributor for Seattle all season long. So Labaka has had his moments one, as well one. as in a both free agent. Yeah, in both directions. In, well, yeah, but in both divisions. <laughs> you know, he's, he was signed by Princeton, and the Revolution have had a way with free agents, so the Smash signed up Labaka when he went back into the pool. This is Nishant's second weekend playing for Texas. In one of the things One, with two. Labak is because he, like Fabi Diaz, has different rubber on each side, he plays with the pimpled out surface on his forehand. So he wants to forehand two, two. smash as much as possible. Whereas as Andrew Sal, he's a heavy forehand top spinner. He's going to try to make that very first loop, two, move three. it around and force Labaka to have to swing wildly. Nice serve by Labaka. Mixing it up. Three, three. What, what's the biggest difference for the guy that has the pips in terms of how he swings and attacks the ball? Well, there's not going to be any arc on the ball. There's no heavy topspin. It's a flat trajectory, so it's almost like in tennis, a volley coming flat into the ball. So he wants to make sure he's getting a lot of balls that are slightly higher Four, three. so he can smash through the ball. Andrew Sal, as the top spinner, can take the ball at much different heights in order to land his forehand loop. You can see how difficult it is for Labaka to get it three, over five. to the forehand. You have to try to smash this ball. So it really shortens his stroke because he doesn't have the, the leeway or the time to take a fuller backswing. But he can mix the spin up. He can do a slight top spin on the first ball, but look for him to follow it with a very flat. Four, five. Kind of, it's a, it's a no spin ball. It's just a flat smash. Up. So warning to Four, get five. his left hand 
out of the field of vision of his opponent. Got to leave your left arm, pull it out of the way as quickly as possible once you toss the ball. You can't let it fight, hang. Fight, fight. when Sean and I were playing, and I called Sean for an illegal serve. You, you made the good six, call. You've been five. drilling down on the service five. rules oh. of the six inches, as well as making sure the contact is not hidden behind the white line. I think I caught you on one toss, though, where you started slightly below the table surface. And then also not having the ball in the palm of your hand, six, but tipping six. it a little bit. You were, you were lenient with me. There were many times you could have called me for some sort of infraction. But I, I did like the fact that your contact got lower and lower, so the quality went up, and you were moving it around. And then getting ready to pound that forehand. I had three lets in a row at one point, which yeah. counts as an ace in my book. Yep. No one else's, unfortunately. <laughs> It just shows that you're making contact at the right height Seven, in order six. to keep that ball as low as possible. What stands out to you about what Labaka's doing here with the 7-6 lead? He, he's keeping the ball in front of him. He's not allowing Andrew to win the battle of the power. And see Andrew looking at his paddle after missing the last ball. That's not unusual six, against a pips out player because there's a lack of spin on the ball. They're really trading in speed, less spin. Key for a good tips out hitter, especially on the forehand side. Hit the ball Seven, at the top eight. of the bounce. You do not want to let it fall down like that last one did. Can't be smashing from below the net height. Oh, it catches an edge, and we're tied eight all. But Labaka did a great job. He dealt with eight, a very eight. strong loop to his forehand side. He's up at the table, and Andrew is that far back. Slight advantage for Labaka, but unfortunate with a back edge off of that final forehand loop. Baca played the point he wanted to play and just erred late. He got the shot. He Nine. opened up with the backhand, stepped around. <laughs> Mini break, though, to Sal. And that's exactly what Labaka wants to do. Deep serve. Get a slower nine, opening nine. and then just smack it. Sean, is it just me or what, have we seen way more deep serves in the late portion of the season than we saw early in the year? Well, they're definitely paying big dividends. And people and players, especially like Jonathan McDonald, Fabi Diaz in both of her doubles matches, Looked like a long backhand warm-up rally. Sal outlasting Labaka to create game point 10-9. Just heavy topspin on every ball from Andrew Sal to finally moving it over to the forehand side. Can I? to lunge across to the finish line. Some fantastic rallies between two really talented teenagers. But Sal prevails 11-9 in game number one.
lot from both of these players. This match will be very interesting. Remember, Nishant is here as a free agent, and he's delivering some very close games, high quality points. This is game number two. Make some noise. One game to sit on. It's been next to serve. All season long, Andrew Sow has found a way to put wins together. Sit on, sit on. Had a great start, obviously. He went 6-0 and and back in September, the first weekend of the season in the West Division. And he was just 16 Oi. years old. He was just 15 years old. He turned 16 One, that weekend. And we were in Santa Cruz right after it. What, what, what do you see as the future for Andrew Sal? Zero, How two. How can he climb? With, look, he's not a big guy, but he's he's quick, he's crafty, obviously been smart, and he's handled the pressure of the moment frequently in tough spots for Seattle. And they needed it. One, him. two. And I thought going into the Olympic trials that he would perform slightly higher just because of his previous matches in MLTT, but I can definitely see him being a very strong member on the U.S. men's team, even after the Three, next trials, competing in Pan Am Championships, Pan Am Games. Um, the one thing that most coaches will look at is the size of the player's legs. He has great legs on him from countless what? footwork drills what? and the power he generates from Four, his forehand. So he's got the body. He's gaining a lot of experience through Major League Table Tennis, especially the international players and the different styles that he's facing. So I only see a lot of good things ahead for both Andrew and Daryl. And look at the forehand of Labaka. It's getting the job done, smacking it away. 2-4. Well, Sean, if we're thinking about the future, Second season of Major League Table Tennis. The plans are being drawn up for that right now. There will be another draft. There's going to be a draft lottery as well for the teams that don't make the playoffs. The draft lottery is, is coming up 10 days from now. Play! And then the MLTT draft Two, will be May 21st. In between the lottery and the draft, there is a trade window where teams can deal both players Five, and picks. And it is a fascinating wrinkle, something of an unprecedented thing in professional table tennis, certainly in the United States. And it's, it's tricky to, to contemplate and to think about what strategies coaches might use. Traditionally in Europe, Six, and even three. in Asia, the clubs or teams that play, they just go out on their own and grab the highest player they can, right. pay them a salary, and they're done with it. With MLTT, with a draft, like all the major leagues in the United States, parity is the goal of the league. So the teams that finish outside the playoffs get the first picks, but they could trade Four, those, as you mentioned, Evan and grab a, a known factor. And look, th there's a world where you know, draft picks are considered even more valuable than current players, depending on the quality of the draft. I mean, not all seasons will have the equal value of, a, of the first round Four, draft seven. pick, for example. But the, the other interesting thing is you know, not every team will make the same number of draft picks because teams will have an option to Hold on to players. Hold on to players or let players go. And that will also obviously depend upon what the draft Same is fight. Look like. But from the rumors we hear, it's going to be pretty darn strong. So I'm thinking about situations like, you know, if you have a chance to get a guy like, say, Damian Provost, who was a really good veteran player on a, on a team that struggled at times this year, you know, would you want to trade your late first round pick? to get a guy like Provost, who has the Golden Game experience, knows the Eight, format. Five. Like, I, I have no, I'm just throwing Damien's name out there. Uh, it could, could have said anyone, but just 
replace Damien with someone else and think about you know, what would the coach do and what would be the optimal play. It's I, I don't know the answer. When you also have to think about potential doubles pairing, and sure. it appears that the women will play a greater role Five, next nine. season, whether they're being playing singles against another female or they must play in a singles match. So a number of variables to take into consideration. Impressive footwork from Sao to stay in the point as long as he could. Lavaca within three here. Six, nine. Look Beautiful at that. Beautiful stuff. A little Omatayo there. Ten, That's six. right. Got some air underneath him as he played a great forehand counterattack cross court for the winner. And then the backhand Eleven, off six, the bounce. To to Too good from Andrew Sao. And from 6 3 down, he has brought the spinners back within one. It's 6 to 5. And these are really important points for Seattle as they try to keep their postseason dreams flickering here in Wichita. with visions of finishing the sweep and tying the team tally at six all. One, Baca zero. Hopeful to get at least one point here for his team and put Nandan Naresh in a much more enviable position up seven five as opposed to being level at sixes. Baca stayed with it. Sal, again, impressively. We saw the Omatayo swinging forehand. We saw the DeSantelon chop to stay in the point. Angela Guan chop as well. That caught the side of the table. It's a good point for Labaca. Zero, three. I, I was thinking about something. <laughs> In, in recent weeks, and I felt like I always thought about it, you know, like in the middle of the night at a time when I didn't want to buzz either your phone or, or Matt Hetherington's phone. Three, one. I was thinking about choppers and wondering who are the greatest choppers in table tennis history and how high of a level a chopper can get among the best players in the world. Three, two. In the past, it was mostly choppers back in the 40s, 50s. Now what is required to play at the highest level is your offense has to be on par with the Omatayos, Two, four. the Coleys, because just chopping by itself, the opponent isn't gonna misread the balls enough. So we have had some players not too long ago, a player from South Korea, Ju Se-yuk, who made the finals of men's singles. So in the past, China has always liked to have one chopper on their Three, men's team four. because there's just not many alive. I mean, they just don't play. There's not, it's a tough style to be successful with at the very highest level. Women's a little bit more. Oh, and there's a Karma. Net ball, edge ball, <laughs> Seattle point. Four, four. Nothing and is and worse and than and an you, edge. You've said in the past, right, that you, you did not particularly enjoy playing choppers. No, no, that's the opposite. I love choppers. Really? Because my game was very forehand dominated, and you were able to run around. Oh. Run around and get the chance to Four to five. just launch 
slower missiles compared to what these guys do. Players but switching sides at 5-4. But if you Forward think about fight. it, Tyrese Knight, great chopper on the backhand side, but at the exact same time, time very out. strong forehand loop. And that's what you need to do. It's a modern-day chopper. And a timeout here for Texas Smash. Nishan timeout Lovato taken we'll by Texas. And the Let's see if drop. Okay. Just play it. Yes, yes. Or just remember, if okay, if he serves this, remember this is gonna be under. You can just, just push him, okay? No worry, don't worry about it. Just play, just play, okay? Just play this shot. How both of these players adapt. Back from the timeout, one point between them here in game number one three. One more question about choppers, and then I'll move on. Four to five. Throughout your lifetime in table tennis, who, who has been the most exciting chopper to watch? Either someone you played against or someone you just enjoyed Six, watching. Four. I think the most Exciting during my generation, and when I give the name, it'll really date me. <laughs> was a player from China named Chen Zhenhua. He was on the Chinese team. Six, 83, five. 85, 87. And um, if you go onto YouTube, type in his name, you might even see him doing some cartwheels when he was returning the balls in exhibitions. But like all the best choppers today, his offense Five, was so seven. strong that you had to get past his offense to make him chop. So it is a fun style to try because you don't have to work so much on the offensive side by just going back and chipping in and letting the opponent sometimes make mistakes. But at the higher level, it's super frustrating. If you were to play a Cole or an... Whoa. Whoa. Somehow it feels like justice that Labaka won that point, but Sal. Six, seven. Catching the edge on that lob. And Labaka does a really nice job of continuing to stay up to the table, kind of close off the angles that Andrew was going for. Oh, he's got to hit that ball. Cannot play that ball safe. Eight, six. Our friend and colleague, Matt Hetherington, chimes in via text on the Chopper conversation mentioning uh, Matsushita Koji. Mm -hmm. From Japan. There's another Shibutani from Japan. Oh. Chen Weijin from Austria. So there's, a, there's been a number of outstanding Nine, choppers. Nine, six. The U.S. is known for a very strong female chopper in Sukhoshan, who was a 11 times women's singles champion. And on the men's Seven, side, nine. Derek May and Arun Kumar would be the top two U.S. men. Labaka has battled, but he's two points away from getting swept. And Andrew Sow just lands that heavy Seven, ten. forehand topspin to all positions on the table, really keeping Labaka off balance to get his forehand smash in. Well, 11, the seven, lead going into the zero. golden game will come down to the final singles match of the night. Nikhil Kumar versus Nandan Naresh. That's coming up momentarily. 11-7 the final score in game three for Andrew Sow who sweeps Nishant Labaka three straight. And Seattle feeling good heading into the home stretch of this Saturday night.
they can do well here in the fourth match. It's the second time in as many days we get to spend a couple minutes with Andrew Sow. Today after a 3-0 win, uh, Andrew, congratulations. Uh, your first time playing Nishant and MLTT. Second, second. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, you're right. Uh, uh, very competitive games. What was the difference in the big points that allowed you to win them? Um, in the beginning, I was going for a little bit too much because his pips was very, like, it's not normal ball. So I need to make more spin. And that's, I feel like I didn't really do much except for change my serve a lot because he had a lot of trouble with receiving my serve. But after the serve, I was also fine. So, yeah. I felt in control of the game. I think it was the first time you faced him as a member of the Texas Smash. Oh, the last yeah. time you yeah. faced him as a Princeton. member of Princeton. the Princeton Revolution. You know, I know you're going to focus on this match, especially the Golden Game. Take us back last week. What were your thoughts on how Olympic tryouts went? Uh, like playing the shot or just like the whole tournament? The whole, the whole tryouts. Uh, I felt like Olympic trials was a little bit slow for me. But then I had the junior trials right after, and I played really well in that tournament, so I felt very good. Yeah. Awesome. What, what what are your hopes and dreams in the sport of table tennis, Andrew? I mean, obviously you're you're still very young, but obviously your talent shows at the professional level now as well. I hope I can be like I can keep being a professional player and training a lot and seeing what my highest potential can be in this sport. What, what has this season been like for you? Just getting the opportunity to be a professional for the first time. It's the best experience because I've never played a league and to start in my uh, home country is really great. So, Congrats on the 3-0 sweep. We'll see you in the Golden Game. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Certainly Before polished beyond his years. Absolutely. Vocally as well. So I'm going to ask you, who's zero, your pick here? Zero. In this match? Yep. Whoever I wins or gets two points, we'll have the lead going into the Golden Game. Who's your pick? I'm going to say with Nikhil being two-time defending U.S. men's champion Zero, one. and just qualified to keep his dreams alive for Paris, he is the favorite. However, Nandan has one speed, and it's all out. And they have played before in MLTT. And it was not an easy match for either player. Two, one. Although Nikhil took the W. And that was all the way back in September. And two of the three Jose! games in that match, Sean, went to the golden went, went to the golden two, point. Two. With each team, with each Nikhil and Nandan winning one golden point. I, I, just, I just feel that Nikhil in this particular match situation, his experience being the men's champion, he can treat it like a final. And Three, two. he's had some challenges and hurdles in MLT team, primarily in the Golden Game. But in singles play, he's done outstanding. And you can hear him right now. This is a completely different Nikhil than we saw yesterday, where he played against his coach, who he's run into a number of times in MLTT action. Yeah, he lost two out of three against Taiwan Zhang of the Bay Area Blasters. Hit! Nan Nan Naresh. Two four. Won two out of three games against Yu Wei Sha, the Portland Paddlers. And stylistically, three, how would you four. compare these two guys? Both are long and lanky and don't have a lot of meat on the bones. Well, Nikhil likes to really mix it up, especially off the backhand side. Whoa. <laughs> He's going for bigger, bigger and bigger forehands and Five, backhands. Three. He had a great world team championships where he took two matches against the top two English players. Nikhil oh. oh. drank his coffee this morning and this afternoon I, and I, this evening. Yeah, I was going to say, four. I think he had a couple Red Bulls, which I think is with the official drink of the revolution in Koyo. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, uh, and that was a bit of an overplay there. It just seems like five, every five. player right now pulling out all this tops to try to outswing the competition. Oh, Naresh <laughs> takes the lead. Six, five. I'm telling you, Naresh has no difficulty taking swings.
Six all. Six, six. Nikhil slightly stronger on the serve and serve return. Being the lefty, he's going to be able to change the spin, force the returns into his backhand side more. Feels like both of these guys want to end the points. Six, yeah. quick seven. <laughs> I was good, like, who has the advantage if it's beyond the seven ball rally? Just experience wise, it's, it's Nikhil. But the swings that Nandan are doing right now. Wow. That might catch, but it doesn't. Eight, six. Wait. Eight, six. See, Kumar just doing a great job of keeping Nandan at bay. Nandan Eight, kept expecting seven. the ball out to the forehand side. Nikhil saw that, just kept it on the backhand corner. Oh, and that's just a great backhand punch by Nandan. Naresh. Seven, nine. Coming out of nowhere just to power that backhand. Eight, nine. Normally we would expect David Macbeth to be in this position, but because the rankings have changed, official USA Table Tennis, that's the swap. Nandan goes up into the top two position. Macbeth came down for Hagberg and Kumar. Nine, well nine. executed third ball attack, finding the open court to the forehand side. Perfect placement. Nandan with the serve to try to finish out game one. Some massive swings from Nandan Naresh. Setting up game point. 10 9. No hesitation from Nandan. Just using the entire court. Game one to nine, Texas. One game to zero, smash. And Naresh gives the smash a 7-6 lead. The advantage heading into the Golden game, hanging in the balance. We know how critical that is, especially now with so little time left in the regular season. Very little tentative play from either guy. I just that yeah, for a first game. A good who got their Texas kids now on four show, points clear of Portland. And you know, regardless of what happens in these next couple of games, you know, it, if if Texas is up four, five, or six on Portland heading into tomorrow, it'll feel pretty wide open. If Texas wins the Golden Game, zero, zero. add six points to their ledger, which would give them, at worst, a 10-point lead, it, it'll be a tough task for the, the Pavlos zero, team. One. Unless we witness the, the vintage Cole, who's struggled this weekend, but they need him to be at his best tomorrow to have a chance. Two, zero. And also, if Seattle is completely out of it, they might opt for moving the players around some. Even if 
they're out of playoff consideration. There's still financial considerations Two, with every game and every match, so there's still incentive. It's not like they're just playing out the string. But right. I hear you. We saw Matilda Ekholm play singles for the first time all right, year in the yeah. final match for Florida when they had been eliminated. One, three. So right now, I've never seen the two play three. this offensive-minded, so. You've never seen him this play? No, I mean, he's, he's, ta he's every single shot, he's ripping three. it as hard as he can. Normally he plays a little bit more three, cat three. and mouse, bring the opponent in, mix it up, change the spin. He's having fun. Jiwei did the same thing when he played in his final game with Pao Wen Jung, where every time the ball came to his back, he just ripped it. Do you think Three, four. is thinking he needs to play this way against Nan Nan because Nan Nan's going to go for broke and he doesn't want to get in the long rallies with him? I think he's just having some fun right now. I mean, watch his facial expression, his body language. It looks like four, he's enjoying four. not feeling the pressure of having to play a Perfect return to stop Nandan from beating him to the punch. He's even mentioning to himself, Wait, you know, let's play five. some back ends. Don't just like put it on the table. Let's put something behind it. His backhand has improved, and it worked really well at the most recent World Team Championships. Eight, four to five. By the way, Seattle needs at least five, one of these five, next two five, games five. to officially, mathematically stay alive. Five. Otherwise, their championship weekend dreams will officially Six, be extinguished. Five. They are very unlikely dreams right now. It would require something like a 20 to 1 win tomorrow, and they would also need the Bay Area Blasters to smash Texas 20 to 1 or something. Or not like make that. the bus or. <laughs> Fail to show up and get defaulted. Seven, five, five, seven. That hasn't happened all, <laughs> all season, but you never know. More likely, I don't make the bus for the early <laughs> start time tomorrow. As long as there's no geese along the way, we should have full five, participation eight. by both teams. Those killer geese here in Wichita. They are known to be aggressive. Especially after North Carolinians. Oh. Nice serve. Nine, five. I think you did one of those earlier today. Well, I can identify <laughs> with this, except there's a reason I'm here with the headset. Ball did not make it table. And a second one. And this, this game has gotten away from Ten the rest. So, you know, once again for Seattle, it's going to be seven all heading into the final game, just like last oh, night. Oh, look Seven at five, that drop shot one after one the loop. Spinners. Kamar wins game two, 11 so to five. Tied up at seven so it's points. interesting. There, there's technically just one point up for grabs. And there's going to be just a one-point lead heading into the Golden Game. But with all we've seen and all we know, this next game to 11 could be a seven-pointer. With the Golden Game hanging in the balance soon thereafter. And one other element we haven't spoken about is that every one of these matches is submitted to USA Table Tennis for official ratings. Right. And that will change seedings in upcoming US Nationals, team trials, state championships, region, regional championships. And as I've watched these two players meet in MLTT, there could also be the mindset of, not the changing of the guard necessarily, but Nandan would like to notch a victory over the US men's champion. But and no doubt. Nothing today. feels Good. better Nehemiah than taking down. I like it. Solid. 
the top dog in That's your country. And Don Don has been together. so close. Right, this is the final game, the for but right now, the both game teams to run. fighting for that one point, Finish, lead, one point lead zero, zero. in the Golden Game. And the ability to have their coaches choose the order and matchups to their advantage. And not and the kill. Perfect One, backhand. Two. That's the direction where he wants to play most of his shots out to the forehand. And a quick two point off the zero, serve. Two. Now you can put pressure on Nandan's serve and be aggressive. Head. Head serve. Zero, two. That was so smooth. Great read on the serve. Zero, three. Took his time, played it to the perfect location. Not sure if Nandan realized his serve went that long. No, 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 focus. Hey! You hear Nikhil saying focus. Three, one. Not a very good set of shot selections there off the table, getting jammed in the backhand. Now we, we've officially reached Four, the point, one. John, where if Seattle can win the Golden Game, we're going to enter the final day of the regular season with every team in the West Division still technically alive. Almost. Two, Almost four. hit the... Uh, Megatron? <laughs> what is Jumbotron. John? Megatron. The Wichita State Shockers Jumbotron here at Charles Koch Arena. Home of Wichita State men's and women's basketball and volleyball. Paid oh, by Major League Table Tennis this weekend. Three, four. Well, think about that. It, let, let's say Nikhil able to close this out. I would get uh, the spinners to 182 overall. If they could get the Golden Game to 188, that means there'd be an 18-point gap between second and fourth place. Texas would only be four, four points four. up on Portland. Four, four, timeout. And we get a timeout from Seattle. After, smart timeout, you know, very right. smart. Nikhil, after starting very strong. Yeah, take your time a little. Just my head with the hook. Just focus and play. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's got a table okay. tennis club in Van Cruz. Don't rush. Just took a minute. Take your time, because you are going too soon now, and then the ball goes straight to the net. Okay? Yeah. Oh, what about Major League Table Tennis? He looked at it and said, you know what? This is a pretty sweet game. No, that's okay. I think that's I'm going to okay. go to the United okay. States. She's been wonderful ever since. Okay, okay. Is Claudine yeah, here? Oh, no. Hi, Claudine. Yeah. Okay. How you feeling? Okay, okay. Awesome. You know exactly awesome what to do, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. just don't rush and take your time and focus. Come on. Amazing. Five, five. Energy. Come on. Over here. Let's talk massage later. Okay. Four points apiece, seven games apiece. After this point, they will switch Not sides done, to keep really things balanced. And the final dodged game before a bullet in the last the golden game. couple points, Nikhil could have just stayed focused as they were talking back during the break. Might have been up five to two, five to three. Great plays by both players. MLTT.com slash tickets. Five, four. Weekend from Loyola University of Chicago. April 27th and 28th. Three weeks from tonight. Five, five. Five all here in game three. We know the importance for both teams. Wow, what defense from Nikhil Kumar. Just kept the five, ball in six. play. Let Nandan over swing. It's a change in his mentality from earlier in the match. Easy ball! 
Big roar from <laughs> Nikhil Kumar. Seven, five. Let's go! It's interesting to see this type of reaction because off the table, you, know, you see these two guys hanging out a lot. They're teammates from Team USA, they're friends, but also fierce competitors. Go! Seven, six. Big serve. Six, eight. Challenging Nandan. Deep topspin serve. Nandan looked ready for it, just the timing is not easy. Nikhil Six. really mixes the amount of spin well on his serve. More importantly, the placement. Always trying to set up his game. And look at that. Finding the open court out to the forehand Six, side. Nine. Not an easy angle to create, but you could just see Nandan flailing at the ball. Net. That was going to be the Six, exact nine. same thing. Serves that are going long. Nikhil really spot, spots up and decides where he's going with it. Seattle was down. Six to three after the doubles. And but again, now just one ten, point away six. from taking a lead into the Golden yeah, Game. Yeah, Evan, you could just see that control backhand opening by Nikhil and then Nandan going for too much. That's ten, it. Six. Nikhil Kumar, Kumar able to come from behind and take two out of three over Nandan Naresh, and that gives the Seattle Spinners an 8-7 lead going into the Golden Game. The Spinners still need to win the Golden Game to stay mathematically alive, and Seattle has Portland pulling for them, trying to keep Texas very much in the middle of the pack, as opposed to creating a little bit too much separation in the standings. It's been kind of a roller coaster of a Saturday night, Sean O'Neill. We had Hiramitsu Kasahara getting beaten two out of three by Olajide Omatayo. And then Dave Macbeth took the first two games. Hagberg with an important point. We can't overlook that 11 7 score in game three for Jay. The doubles, three really tight games, but both golden points going the way of Wong and Kasahara. And then another very competitive match between the two teenagers, Sal, a little bit better in every game. And that set up Kumar versus Naresh. Nandan got the win in game one, but it was Nikhil Kumar with the last laugh, taking games two and three by the combined score of 22 to 11. Time to find out what the order of the Golden Game is going to be. Here is Mimi Bosica. Thanks, Dave. See you as well. Now it's time for Mimi Bosica for the draw. Okay, thank you, Adam. So we have Seattle leading eight to seven, which means Texas will choose their first player and they will start with, Seattle starts with a 1-0 lead. You will choose the first player coach and you'll get the serve. Nishant Labaka will play first. Who will play first for you? Andrew. Sao. Andrew Sao will go first for Seattle. Second? Johan Hagberg. Johan Hagberg will go second for Seattle. Nanda Nuresh for Texas. And who will go third, coach? Dave McBeth will go third. What about you, Seattle? Nikhil Kumar. Nikhil Kumar will go third and fourth. Olajide. Olajide will go fourth. Hiramitsu Kasahara will go fourth for Texas, which means Amy Wong will go fifth and Fabiola Diaz. Okay, good luck, coaches. Good luck. Awesome. What do you think of what we've got, Sean? Excitement. Yes, indeed. 
Whose order do you like better? I just like the energy of Seattle right now. I just think that the experience of Andrew in that first match, I think the second match with Nandan and Hogberg could go either way. Nikhil McBeth, I'm gonna go with Nikhil as a slight advantage. Then we've got a repeat of the first match, which Omotayo took. And we have the ladies. Are you surprised that Texas started with Nishant Labaka? Little bit, little bit. But his style in Five. Golden Games is Ooh. very effective. It puts maximum pressure one, one. on one the one opponent piece. when you're only playing four points. Two straight for Lavaca, and Texas leads by one. Right now, one, one serving two. One, two. I have a feeling, Evan, that this is the reason why Coach Jorg continues to go with Labaka. Because in the he Golden Game, this tips out three, one. style is not easy to deal with. And his first time up, he definitely proved it. Texas what you're trying to say is you can settle one. into it, in playing against that style exactly. over the course Hamburg of a game to 11, but Texas you're going to play smash. almost 20 points. Yeah. Yeah. But with four, or just three. Lavaca won three straight. Heavy and Hackberg gets Johan Seattle on the board in the goal game two. beyond the point they earned. Coming two. into it. Ooh, Tough break for Naresh. Huge three, point three. for Hagberg and Hagberg in Seattle. Going for, we saw it in the singles, going for the heavy chop, sir, chop serve returns. He's catching the net quite often. And look at that. Nandan continuing to have three. issues and Seattle back on top. Negating the hard work of Labaka. The golden sweep for Jay Hackberg. Seattle needed two down to two up. This is going to be a great matchup here. Coming in now, McBeth with the heavy spin. Kumar with the left handed. Strong backhand play by McBeth. The heel needs to keep it short or play something offensive to a good location. Two straight for McBeth. We are tied five all. McHugh Kumar to serve at five all. What defense by McBeth. Able to stop three forehand loops five, six, and then to counterattack. Excellent play. You said this whole match is going to roll across her. How about this golden game? A sweep for Lavaca in Texas, a sweep for Hagberg in Seattle, and now another sweep for McBeth in Texas. McBeth is so smart, getting that heavy spin and keeping it low. And now the two biggest hitters from both these teams. Both played in the first single spot. Omotayo took two out of three. Kasahara got the better with his doubles partner, Amy Wong, against Olaji Day. Oh, Seven, smart four, controlled six, opening Seven, six. by Omatayo. Didn't six. go for broke, but just kept the ball nice and low. Yeah. And again, he go short with it. He missed Seven, it. Seven. Seven. We're tied again. Seven all. Omatayo with both points, points so on Hiramitsu's serve. Keeping the ball on the table works. Missing the table does not. Oh, that's more than just keeping it on the table, Sean O'Neill. That is sizzling. Inside out, forehand loop from the backhand side. Nobody at home. Well, we have another, another sweep. Potential sweep. No, net and out. Kasahara salvages one point. It's eight to eight. Just before we are dead even. And coming into the Six arena now. massive points Bobby on the line. This could very well decide whether it's Texas, Texas or Portland. Smash. That makes the playoff. We'll know more apiece. tomorrow, of course. And these two ladies have played before in the Golden Game and I believe it was a Golden Point. 
Rip by Amy, serves it into the middle and follows up with the backhand for the win. 9 8. Amy Wong going for it. You're right, Sean. Back on November 17th, Diaz over Wong and an ultimate Mid. golden point. One nice, six. nice. We've had all season. Will we see the seventh tonight? Oh, oh, wow. Amy Wong so rips a winner. By the way, if we do get to the nine, ultimate nine, golden point, ten. it will not be Wong and Diaz. It will be Sao and Labaka. Long way to go. Wow. So tied 10 10, though. Yes, splitting. Major victory Back for the, game once again. the spinners. Okay, Labaka won three, three straight against three Sao earlier in the Golden the Game. This and he's is up against in the Andrew aftermath of Sao winning three now. straight games Ten over Nishant in that third single spot during the match. The question is will Labaka be aggressive with the serves? I'd Give say it, he's man. aggressive with a third ball attack. Perfectly executed, got the high ball. Solid footwork, found the open court. Jörg Bitsigayo looking on from Germany. That's five straight points for Labaka here in the Golden Game. Two point lead for Texas Time out, Seattle. Time out. Andrew is just Again, waiting for the to miss versus taking pressure. In the back. This, it's not and he gets every single roll that way. Okay? He pushed into the forehand before and he was missing more. Wide Nishan open on the Labaka forehand. Wide open. Three just zero. don't stress. Go back. Focus on the next point. He has Set up your serve. Serve to the backhand. He's won every okay? point. To come back Let's go. and make a statement. He's five right. for five. Come on, come on, fight, fight. Focus fight. on the next. The best way to respond to the hater is to Two serves on the for Sal. Team. He and his team trail by ben two in this game to 21. To the game. It is 10 Six massive MLTT points Andrew up for grabs. I'm Labaka. I open up off the serve. I went for it, but Sal came with some pop as well. Andrews on the board here in the Golden Game. One more point for these two. And Sal earns the equalizer 12 all. Those two are done for the night unless we get to 20 all. Which would not. So 12 Surprise each. me the way these two Remember, teams are battling back and game, forth. Will win the team I don't think we we'll see as many sweeps right now. And Hogberg swept Don Don last time, but Gretz gets the one point lead here. Hogberg going for the chop on every serve, regardless. There's another chop, and that's just. Oh my behind. goodness, you gotta be kidding. But he gets the net. Jay 13, Hamburg. 13. I mean, what type Keeps of tactics are those? Playing. Chop high. Diabolical. Let the opponent rip it Romance and then go for an end return. 13 points apiece. 13 all. Oh. 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 13, 14. Back. After a fancy serve was touched back. 14 serving 13. I get the score wrong on the flip card. Stop score. Stop. 13 serving 14. 13, 14. Oh. Naresh finds the corner and, and puts the smash up by two again. Texas smash. London Naresh with the last point sends in Dave McVeigh. Naresh after dropping torch. four straight points earlier wins it's three out of four this time. 15, 15, 15. 15. Against Kumar with a two point lead. Now McBeth swept Nikhil earlier. And he's got That's another 16, point 15. for the smash here in the Golden Game. Nikhil. Frustration building for Nikhil. 16 serving 13. He knows the value of each one of these serves. Oh, 
Dave Macbeth has come to play. Green Plants, 13, serving 17. The Important point for Nikhil Kumar. 14, He's 17. kept the pressure on the backhand side. 14, serving 17. One more point for Omatayo and Fasahara. Take it to that David catch. It did. Caught the back edge. By, by the, the hair man, that, that couldn't have been more than a chin. millimeter of the back edge. Lead, Texas smash. Slow this one down. 14. Yeah, Masa definitely Masa caught. Side. And Jide, Olajide Omatayo so on the receiving lead. Seattle needs a sweep. Not gonna get it. Best they can attack. hope now is 1917 for the ladies. Kasahara could close it out here. Oh. Wow. They Another boot off the end 15, of the table. 19. Kasahara have trouble with the higher balls. He's got the serves here at 15 Omotayo 19. hold his serve. Texas just two points away. And a service oh, error from Omatayo. Sets I up cannot five. believe it. Golden game in team match points. 15, How serving cruel. 20. An game. unusual punishment. Game point for the smash. And it's over. Oh, and the smash oh, take a gigantic oh, step toward the playoffs oh, by coming from behind oh, to win the golden game and officially oh, eliminate oh, Seattle oh, from oh, postseason oh, contention. Oh, 21 to 15 behind the performances of Macbeth, Lavaca, Kasahara, and Naresh. Amy Wong wasn't bad either. After a big victory, the barriers fly, and the spectators got their money's worth here today. What a finish in an incredibly nail biting battle, and Texas smash. Again, way out Texas in front goes of four and two against Seattle during 10, the season, which means there will and be the one smash more day will take a ten-point lead over the paddlers into the, the final Sunday tomorrow, of the regular season. Texas goes into tomorrow knowing that if they can earn 11 points out of the 21 against the Blasters, they will be going to championship weekend. So we're joined by Dave Macbeth. Dave, uh, what a wild roller coaster of a match that was. You guys had the lead. They had the lead. It was back and forth. We saw the kind of the same thing in the Golden Game. What was the difference? What were you saying to your teammates on the bench late in the Golden Game to pull it out? Yeah, I think <coughs> especially after we were obviously in the lead, Nishant was obviously disappointed, Nandan was disappointed, and it was just about resetting before the golden game and making sure well, we're still in it. We're, obviously, it was only the one point difference, so it was basically a love all game. So. What, what changed for you in the golden game? I mean, it seems like you it was came out. It was better than the singles. It was better than anything this whole weekend, probably. So. What was the difference for you? Why do you feel more comfortable in the golden game? <laughs> Had a bit more match practice, I'm not, I'm not sure. No, I was obviously motivated against Nikhil. I lost, I think, last time I played him. And I played him in the Golden Game first weekend, and I went one and four, I think. So, yeah, I was trying to get some revenge on him. So you're going to be calling home and letting him know, or are they watching live? Well, I don't know what to tell him. It must be way gone now. Hopefully they're asleep, yeah, Sean. Well, so. with it, with they don't want to be daughter, listening to me, that's for sure. Young daughter, I would guess that she might be up. Yeah. Watching dad play, so my, my voice will put him to sleep, no problem. <laughs> so, well, that, that's a good thing with you, with a newborn yeah. at home. Um, yeah. Tomorrow, you get a quick turnaround. You're, you'll be back on the table, you know, about 13, 14 hours from now. Yeah. And with the win tonight, you got a 10-point lead for the final playoff spot. If you get 11 points against the Bay Area Blasters tomorrow, you'll punch your ticket to the championship event. What, what's foremost on your mind heading into the final day of the season? Well, we just want to qualify if that's by getting the margin or if it's just by getting enough points and Portland don't equal that but yeah we're going to go out to win the match tomorrow and hopefully we can qualify for the finals. Now if you beat the, the Blasters 20-1 to 1, you could catch them in the standings. Yeah, we'll, see. <laughs> we'll take it one, <laughs> one, one point at a time maybe. But I'm going to stop throwing scenarios no, at you, let fine. you enjoy this. We want to qualify, that's, that's it. Congratulations, Cheers. Dave. Well done. Cheers. Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow. Nice one.
Well, it was an exciting night, certainly a, a consequential night for the West Division race, and that's how we land with Texas. Remember at the start of the weekend, Texas was behind Portland, but their 16-5 to win overcame the 11-point deficit, and they, uh, they outscore them by 10 more today. The paddlers got rocked, so Portland certainly up against it, and Texas goes into tomorrow knowing that with 11 points, they guarantee it. If they can get six or seven, though, it's going to be really tough for Portland the way things are going. Yeah, Port Portland has their work cut out for them. Really losing that first match set the stage for them, but credit David Macbeth and his teammates for getting the job done, playing big when they needed to, and just dominating and playing great in this golden game. Golden game always delivers, doesn't it? It is. An incredible experience to, to witness, to enjoy. Tough to compete in, tough to lose. But uh, Texas comes from behind, becoming just the fourth team in 34 Golden Games this year since the calendar flipped to 2024 to pull it out. So that'll wrap up our Saturday evening coverage here from Wichita. We thank you for joining us wherever you are around the globe. For my partner, Sean O'Neill, Evan Lepler saying good night. Texas victorious in the Golden Game, 21 to 15. They win the match, 13 to 8. We'll see you tomorrow for the final Sunday here in Wichita. Good night, everybody.